Efficiency of subwoofers. Sometimes you hear people say that, man, an eight inch subwoofer is more accurate than a 10 or a 12. It's, that's not the case. An eight inch subwoofer, a six and a half inch subwoofer, any subwoofer in relation to a subwoofer in a larger will always be more less inefficient, less, less efficient. A six and a half is less efficient in reproducing low bass frequencies than an eight. An eight is less efficient than a 10. But likewise, a 10 is less efficient than a 12. People that tell you that an eight inch subwoofer is more accurate is like saying that a six and a half inch subwoofer is more accurate than an eight. That's not the case. As you go down in size, you lose efficiency every producing notes. An 8 inch is a, a notoriously inefficient driver. That's why most times the FS is high. You have to give off some you have to give off some trade off to get the FS low. Same thing with a six and a half inch. It's notoriously inefficient. Now with that being said, look at it like this in size. With every stroke, who's gonna if this wolf will move five millimeters and this one move five millimeters. Which one's gonna move more air? Now look at the cupping of the two. The larger subwoofer is gonna move more air. And what makes bass? Space. Air movement. The smaller subwoofer would have to move quicker to move as much air to get the depth into the base than an eight inch would have to do pretty easily. This is also a myth. You could put 500 watts on a, well that's not, take his power handle. You could put 300 watts on this G1, right? That's half the power that this could take on this. This, this eight inch could take 600 watts on this. This only take 300 watts on this. But at 300 watts on this, this is reaching its capability. This was just getting started. This one, the, the eight inch would be louder at 300 than this would be at 300 because now it's reaching its full X max. It's going to start getting to its distortion point where this one is not even nowhere near it. The larger subwoofer is going to move more air. If you can in your application, you want to go with the, 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 the largest subwoofer that you possibly can. Well, man, why are you always trying six and a half and eight inch? Well, for one, they're a little cheaper, so I can show you how to test. That's one reason I can buy them a little cheaper than larger counterpart. Number two, in my application, the eight-inch driver is that enables me to use as many as I possibly can. I can't even use a 12-inch driver in my application. Now to get the sign output that I want and do it accurately and correctly. So that's why I prefer the eight-inch. But I'm not going to sit there and tell you that with my eight-inch is the way I love them and play with them. That if I had four, if I had four tens, I'd clown the mates. If I had four twelves, I'd clown the four tens. As you move up in size, you increase the efficiency and the less power is needed to give a, a given sound result. 300 watts here, 300 watts here, this is louder because it's more efficient. It's moving more air per stroke than the six and a half. Also, and this must be factored in as well, especially at tuning. As you go down in size, your woofer falls off quicker below the tuning of the enclosure. An enclosure, tuning 35 hertz. The best enclosure for both, 35 hertz, 35 hertz. The roll off here would be 12 dB, right, right about 36, I mean 34. Instant fall off. Instant fall off with a six and a half inch driver. Why? It doesn't have enough spider to control itself with low tuning. Since there's no back pressure back there, it's going to move crazy. It's going to move crazy because it has it doesn't have enough spider to control that there's no pressure behind it. Not so with the eight inch driver. With the eight inch driver, tuning at thirty five, you can pretty much get output all the way to. I say 
32, 32, 31. At least three hertz under before you start. You won't get to 12 dB till you get to about 28. That's when you will see it really fall off dramatically. Because this spider, this spider is the same size. It's by the spider on the eight inch is the size of this six and a half inch total from one side to the other. That's the spot on this eight inch. It's the, it's the size from here to here on this six and a half inch. So below tuning, tuning to 35, we'll fall off. We'll see a 6 dB at about 31, 32. Starting to fall off, starting to lose output. Let's say we had a 10 with 235. Where's it going to fall off at? About 29, 30. Why? Because the spider on the 10 is going to be roughly the size of from here to here of the 8. So as you go up in size, you're able to tune maybe a little bit higher and don't detect that much of a roll off below tuning because you have a more spider, more help in controlling the cone when the back pressure disappears. So when you're picking out enclosure for yourself, try to go with the largest enclosure, the largest, I mean, when you're picking out a subwoofer, try to go with the largest size subwoofer that you possibly can fit in your application and run with the correct airspace. It behooves you. It's the best thing to do. There is no smaller subs are more accurate. No. The larger the sub, the more efficient the output. Larger sub have muddier base. Eights are more punchy. Mm -mm. Mm. It's something wrong with your enclosure. <laughs> it's something wrong with your enclosure. Now that's just a fact. It just it's just a fact. Efficiency is efficiency. The best a hundred what thirty five hertz sound like thirty five hertz here, here, and each size up. If your enclosure and your power is correct, keep that in mind. And why do you keep having all these DB drive suffers? Are you going to test anything else? Yes, of course I am. But if you need one, <laughs> holler at me. <laughs>